All right, guys, what's going on? So this is my typical breakfast right now, seeing as I like to eat and get in the car and drive. Today is gonna to be extra special. You're gonna see me training later today, after regular work hours, my buddy Scott, which you guys have seen. Um, he's gonna to pull today and I'm gonna to pull as well. So I'm actually gonna double check if we're still on for that. Yeah, it's his pull day tonight, so hopefully we'll be hitting the gym with him tonight. I gotta wait for him to respond, so if not, well then a potato and we're not. If we do, I'm gonna eat this. My shake's already packed, Lara bars with the shake. Got my water filled up, and we're gonna get on the road and just run errands around the house. Just a couple things I need to do. I picked up some nice grass-fed beef yesterday because I'm sick of eating the cheapest beef that I can find. So we'll see if that's a little bit better. Only picked up two pounds, probably gonna make a butt ton of pasta and just have like, 25 grams of protein from animal protein each one of those meals. Also, shout out to my first girlfriend who poured chili on my pasta and it was forever life changing. So I definitely bought a can of chili. We're gonna throw that in the pasta as well or on top or something. But right now we're just doing some honey bunches of oats, about a cup, a scoop of whey and 100% isolate and a muffin so this with a banana which I'll grab in a second which will be my will be my first meal and then yeah that's what I'm doing lately usually three or four food meals and two or three shakes per day and uh, we'll see how it goes might do a full day of eating but probably not because you guys have seen it before but whatever I eat whenever I have the camera on me I'll show you guys so let's get started I guess if I eat muffins every day, I might as well explain or rate them. Let's give this one a good try. Who am I kidding, dude? All muffins are good. Seven, eight, nine, or 10 out of 10. I'm iron. What a lovely family of four right there. The ride so far today, well, the first ride has been awesome. The gentleman in the front seat told me he had a 2001 E39 M5, and so we talked M3s, and then his son Zach has just moved out here recently, so we shot the ish for a little bit, and now we are um, in really the heart of downtown, so I'm gonna show you guys something that you need to see. Out the window right here, this opens up in March. I'll be lol when we're roller coaster riding. In middle of downtown, that's right. Check that out. This is the beauty of Denver. If you ever want to visit, you know what's up. Also guys, if we're gonna get anything done today, we gotta to take care of this, or this weekend, I mean, if you know what I mean. And I was driving this cool kid last night, named Guy who was a bartender, he had a sick ass haircut, so I said, bruh, bruh, where'd you get your haircut? And this is what he said. Proper barber shop. Did I ever have a choice? Absolutely proper cut. From easy, the proper barber shop. Let's make some money now. Alright guys, midday, we're out of food, so I'm gonna try this ground beef right here. 92.8, grass fed. In Colorado, or it's Colorado source, so 23 protein, 9 fat. Probably do a serving to a serving and a half per meal, and there's my fats and my proteins. So, let's cook it up. That's definitely more like it. So I'm gonna take down meal three, I think. And then, I'll see you guys in the gym. Bah, super tired. Half a muffin pump, digest in gym. What else are you gonna do? All right guys, we made it to 24. It's 5.52, it's just super dark. We got a quarter scoop of pre-workout. I ended up driving Lyft an hour ago just because I had some time to kill and I ended up picking up three people on one route down south of Denver. So finally made it back like an hour and 10 minutes later. It's actually been an hour and a half, but whatever. I lose track of time. So we're gonna down, like I said, 60, 70 megs of caffeine because I like the taste. But yeah, 
I've had the same pre-workout since I moved here. And guys, if you're doing a scoop of pre-workout, just stop. Stimulants are proven to tax your central nervous system, make you recover worse. So just stop. Stop. Dead game. Two scoops to the dome. Time to kill it. Time to bleed. No fake weights here. Turns out it's stupid packed, but we're gonna film what we can. Let's do a set of five, and then someone commented and was hating that how I do so little volume, so maybe we'll go up. Alright guys, what's going on RZ Fitness? Checking in with another video. Today's topics, we're just going to go through this five minutes of training or so. Oh, camera fell there, but we did do five sets of five. Talk about my pull-ups and my back progression, mostly my diet. So a comment yesterday or a couple days ago was, how come you always do five by five on pull-ups? Well guys, when you're doing full range of motion pull-ups, there is a few ways you could progress. One, it's definitely shortening your rest times from three minutes to say two, maybe a minute and a half. Now I'm not saying that that's gonna make you bigger or that's progressive overload technically, but that's progressing in a sense that your endurance and your recovery and your stamina in between sets is faster. And usually that's gonna to lead to muscle growth or muscle hypertrophy and strength over time. So someone like myself has had bicep tendonitis since when I started lifting at 17 years old. I played a ton of golf in middle school and high school and I always had a certain problem right here where my bicep attaches. So for me to do about 70 or 80% of my maximum recoverable volume on a pull day is really all I can do. If I do go balls out 90 100%, after two or three workouts, I wake up and I'm sore here and then I can't do a pull up for six or seven days. So 25 pull ups for me is about my limit of when I can go in the gym any day, fly through 25 pull ups, also do some arm work, leave and have zero soreness. If I were to do seven sets of five, I might make, wake up the next day with a little bit of soreness. And sure, you guys may say, well, if you recover properly and if you build up to it slowly, then you should not get that tendonitis. But I've been doing this for 11 years, doing pull-ups for that long. I remember my first trainer had me do negatives where I'd jump up onto the uh, pull-up bar and slowly lower myself, jumping off a bench, doing negatives. That's literally like one of the only negatives you should ever try, by the way. And um, yeah, so that's what I like to do. Me and Scott went back to back, and the first three reps of each of those sets, if you rewind and watch, I literally fly through the air and pretty much touch my chest to the bar and then I fall all the way down. And by set four or five, when I pull up, I can feel myself getting to about chin height and then I have to grind it. But those first three reps, I can pull all the way to almost my nipple or my collarbone and I don't grind at all. So it's kind of like when I hit triples on bench and you see that third rep fly. If I were to do two more reps, it won't fly like that. So that's just for me personally what I do. If you guys could walk in and do sets of 10 on pull-ups, well then maybe you're not 210 pounds gym weight or maybe you have better arm genetics. That's really all it's about. And uh, again, like I said, my back shoulder width and my lats are I think my better body parts. So for me to spend time slaving away on pull-ups while hurting my arms or my tendonitis, it's gonna take away from my pressing strength because when you lock out the elbow, that's where I get the tinnitus. So if you guys are aware, now you're aware. Um, and now my diet. Typical pull day with buys and tries and some abs, so it was a hard workout. But how am I fueling these workouts? Well, now that I'm driving Lyft, what I'll do is I'll wake up, I'll have cereal whey muffin and a banana, something like that. Sometimes it's two cups of cereal, sometimes it's one. But overall, it's a medium-sized meal, like seven, six to 700 calories. The next meal will usually be a shake, or if I train after that first meal, I'll have egg whites and rice and then a shake. But as I'm in the car, guys, sometimes I'm in the car two to five hours, three to five hours, so I always bring a cup of oats, two scoops of whey, like a scoop and a half, and then a serving of peanut butter. And I'll bring that shake with me on the road minimum two times a day, and usually it's three times a day. So I eat my breakfast, I eat eggs usually with rice after training, so I don't get too many fats, just the whites. Then I'll have a shake, then I'll have beef and pasta, then I'll have a shake, and then I might come home and have some more eggs and rice, whole eggs, or some chicken and rice if I have that cooked up. So what I wanna really address in this is that any diet, and Jason Blahas made several videos on this, 
Any diet excluding a macronutrient or a certain source of food is a diet you shouldn't be on unless you're an extreme or an extreme case of an eating disorder like you're obese. If you're obese and maybe something becomes a trigger food that wouldn't for us, like I can have a muffin with my clean meals and I don't binge because I'm already a large individual weighing 210 pounds or so. Anytime you exclude a certain group of food, there's really no benefit to that. If you're eating a super low carb diet, which I won an overall NPC show eating 150 grams of carbs a day, which for some people, that's like medium. Um, if you're on a low carb diet, sub 100 or trying keto, guys, if you're doing it for anything as far as your physique goes, just stop. If you're excluding fruits for your physique, stop. If you're excluding white rice or starchy carbs or simple carbs for your physique, don't do that. Learn how to incorporate everything into your diet. Trust me, I've been doing this and dieting and bulking and dieting for a very, very long time. And one thing I can tell you is that excluding certain foods just for the sake of doing so is not going to teach you anything about nutrition or get you closer to your goal. The idea is learning how to balance your nutrition so that when you do run out of rice, you know you can just have some bread. Or when you are running low on your lean proteins, it's perfectly fine to have some whey or to just make more eggs or something like that. So my diet is very simple. I have my three simple shakes. I don't have a weight gainer. I don't use crappy whey protein concentrate. It's nothing fancy. I have my oats, whey, and peanut butter because it's cheap and it's effective. And say if I wanted to get leaner, I would just start tracking how many meals I'm having and realize, okay, six to seven meals all with fats and carbs, probably not the best idea. Let me have two meals with just protein and fat, or let me just limit my muffins or remove my muffins from my diet so that I'm not overeating carbs. But say I was out of my carb source and I needed some fuel and the muffins are there, it's okay to eat what you need to eat. The idea is getting in a balanced diet with the right amount of energy and eating fruits and vegetables. As soon as you start looking at something as bad and something as necessary, you start to trap yourself and put yourself into a corner that you might not get out of and it might really affect your results because you're gonna fixate on that. So don't structure everything around certain foods. Structure your diet around an idea and then fit whatever foods that are healthy that you like and that you have on you in it. So I'm gonna show you guys some crazy stuff that just went down. It's 1.30, I was gonna stop driving around 12.15, but my last ride did this to me. Denver to Boulder, holy crap. But the money was good, now I'm home and I'm gonna have some eggs and rice. And Jim, not tomorrow, I'm taking the day off, so I'll check in with you guys another day. But dang. All right guys, so this is easily meal seven, I think. I had three whole food meals, three shakes, and now four whole eggs, a cup and a half of rice. Gotta grow, gotta maintain so much food.